Well, Dan yeah, yeah. Jones. That's what everyone is thinking. Everyone's thinking. And is this the project that you show? It's one of them, yeah. So this is the one you're sneaking in. Well, I can sneak that one in, yeah. Everyone's Good thinking. Have a cup of could tea you please be quiet? And drink No, what am I saying? There is no E. <laughs> so he couldn't have done it, but it's not a choice. Hold on, what do you mean? I can sneak that one in. That sounds like there's others you're going to sneak in too. It's a secreting, that's the wrong word. <laughs> Sneaking. Well, I've just got several pairs of socks done have and we you wouldn't let... them all? Yes. Right. There's four. That's the word. We're secreting socks. We're secreting socks. I'll never oh, show you what I'm drinking. Goodness. Well, you always tell me I've got lipstick, don't you? We're just getting the lipstick off our teeth. <laughs> Apologies for that. I think it's all done. Am I okay? I think mm -hmm. so. Welcome to episode 70. I say 70 because it must be, because it must be winter, because it's been snowing. What precisely is going on? What is going on? It's, it's been horrible, the weather this week. Freezing. Well, I say free. Well, actually, overnight it has been freezing, hasn't it? Yeah. It's been like maybe one I'm sure degree. I heard someone scrape in a car this morning. Yeah, I think it yeah. was too. Um, so very cold and it snowed and hailed and wind and everything yesterday. But I think it's like this in lots of places. I think it is too. Sally's, in Europe. Oh, well, Sally told me that it's been very cool all of a sudden in California. What is it, 80 degrees? No, 52. I think you said it was 52, Sally, didn't right. you, yesterday. Which, for it's, this time what, of What's year, that? I don't know what that is. 52 Do I know what is that is? Like, oh, what's 52? I'm lost now. In Fahrenheit. I can't quite... But it's, it's cool. What will 52 be? I'm guessing it's sort of 10-ish degrees C. All right. Like, am I completely wrong? That's balmy. Do you know what? We went away few years ago at Easter and we did. there was massive snow drifts. Oh we did. So, That's true. You know it, it perhaps isn't. A, I don't think it's unusual and if you remember when we went away last year at Easter as well it was really chilly. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, it's knit or forfeit this week we find out who wins. Will it be me or will it be Robin? So you'll find out later in the show and she's made an amendment to my forfeit but I won't tell you what it is. I still have to knit holy things. Um, right. but it's, I she, can't remember what the amendment was. Well, we shall find out later right. on in the show. It's all very exciting. It is. And it, people sent you lots of nice messages, didn't they? They did. I just wanted to say, just quickly, I'm not going to dwell on it at all, um, but thank you for all the messages about my dad. He's, he's still in hospital. He's still incredibly, incredibly poorly. Um, I mean, he's still with us, obviously, but thank you so much to everybody. It's you know it's really lovely that you take the time out just to you know to send me messages or just to comment on Instagram. I really appreciate that. Um, it's just a horrible horrible time for me and for all my family right now. It's it, oh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not going to dwell on it. Um, but I just really really wanted to say thank you. When you know the last time I I saw him, which was the weekend just gone. I wanted to, to do something and just a little bit positive while I was there because, it, you know, the situation is, is the complete opposite. So I took a sock with me to knit on, thinking I would never, I, you know, I wouldn't have time to knit on it. And, and actually I had, it was probably only 10 minutes. I think I was there four or five hours and it was probably just 10 minutes that I sat down and knit. But actually my auntie was there, my, my one of my dad's sisters, and I was sat knitting in the like little room the room where he is is in like a little hospice ward in the hospital and there's the area where his bed is and then there's like a little divide and then there's like a tiny a tiny kitchen and there's a fridge and a microwave and there's a bed so it's you know it's really nice where he is um, but I was sat the other side just sort of knitting for five minutes and then she came through and just sat down and had a cup of tea and she went oh what are you knitting and you know she was a knitter and I said oh, I'm knitting a sock she says, oh, how are you doing that? Because I was knitting on Magic Loop. She says, oh, I used to do those, but on, you know, on, on four needles. I says, yeah, yeah, you know, I do that as well. And she was fascinated with what I was knitting and the yarn as well. They just, you know, historically, nobody really, you know, knitters didn't have the, the choices that we have these days. 
of, of yarn to knit with so we sat and chat you know chatted for maybe only sort of like I said 10 minutes and I was knitting and she was telling me about matinee coats that she used to knit um, matinee coats are just not in fashion anymore are they for babies at all everything comes back then. everything comes back that's very true um, so I'll show you the sock that I was knitting on and what? it's what well you're showing a sock I have to get look we had this last time. Everybody's on my side. Thank That's just not cricket. No, no. I have to squeeze in another sock because you won't let me. And the restriction that you I haven't gave... even said what's on your needles. I don't care. And she's already showing. I do not care. I'm well, I'm show... not asking. No, I'm not bothered. I'm going to show you this sock and I'm not bothered. So, this is a sock I was knitting on. And I have shown this on Instagram. So, if you follow me on Instagram, you'll probably have seen it. But... I was upstairs getting pyjamas out ready for, for bath time and stuff and Bryony came with me, she loves to help whatever I'm doing and um, she said, oh mummy, can I choose you a pair of socks to wear? Because I put like a pair of hand knitted socks on with my pyjamas every night and I said, yeah, yeah. So she started going through my sock drawer and I said, oh, why don't you try on a pair of those socks? So she started trying on all my socks and they kind of fit her. I mean, all mine are, are generally a 64 stitch count and they were a little bit big, but they kind of, kind of fitted her and she actually stole a pair off me. She's wearing at the minute at bedtime my fondant fibre, the Laura's frock socks. She chose those because there's cashmere in them. You know, she likes soft things. And I said to her, you know, I'll knit you some socks if you want to. And she's like, oh, will you, mummy? And I said, yeah, you know, I've knit her socks before, but historically she would never wear them. But she seemed really, really keen. So I said, right, come on, let's go and have a look in my room. And I started pulling out loads of skeins of yarn. And then this skein came out and that was it. She was gone. She was like, I've got to have that mummy. And it's my, this was a gift, a lovely gift to me. And I've been hoarding it because I just couldn't, I couldn't face breaking into it. I just, oh, it was just too, too precious. But she really, really wanted it. And there comes a time really when every yarn has got to be knit, I think. And it was time for this one. And it's Fibre Nymph Dye Works. And it's the, why are you laughing? Because it sounded like you were talking about like a treasured chicken that you know you, you decided and now is the time for it to go in the pot <laughs> it's yarn it's supposed to be knit with i know it's supposed to be knit with you're absolutely right but sometimes it's just, just sit there looking so, at it it's just so lovely isn't Ooh. it that you just have to you just have to have it for a little bit and just know that you've got it and but you could wear it i know or see someone else i know wear it. i know i know well i am doing that now aren't i that's but sometimes true. you just need to hoard, don't you? I wonder how long you would have um, hoarded that for. Well, I don't know. Were it not for Brian's I know. I've, I've picked it out of my stash numerous times thinking I should knit with it. And then I'm like, no, I can't quite can't quite do it yet. But it's um, Fibre Nymph Dye Works. It's on the Bedazzled base, which is 75 Superwash Merino, 20 Nylon, 5 Stellina. And it's the Nyan Cat. Is that how you say it? Is that how you say it? I don't know. I don't... Yeah. Is that Nyan cat? Mm. You get um, 438 yards of the Nyan cat colourway and then 219 yards of the, the coordinating navy blue. That's the navy blue. You can see all the sparkles. Look at that. It looks like a, a midnight sky, doesn't it? It's just gorgeous. So you get this huge, huge skein. And then this is the Nyan cat. You're all shouting at me for saying that wrong, but. There it is. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Gorgeous. And this is how it works up. I'm going to put it on a blocker because the effect is better when it's on a blocker. I'm knitting these actually on Magic Loo for a change. And also because I thought I might have them in the car. So I think it's easier, I think, Magic Loop in the car, isn't it? Because I'm always worried I'm going to drop a DPN. Here it is. Oh, my goodness. Are you all in love with that sock? Isn't it fabulous? Look at that sock on the screen, Dan. It's amazing. It's amazing. And something I noticed actually the other day when I was knitting on this is that my rainbow's the wrong way around. None of this counts, you do realise. It Because it was done outside of the What's On Your Needle segment. There's going to be people who've come to the show in halfway through and they'll be like, what's going on? I know, but look at the beautiful sock. Do How you know can what? I not Seriously, show? though, I think I did have a message from someone after the last one. Telling you what? No, no, no. She was like, I couldn't work out what was going on. Because Kay was starting a project and you hadn't got to what's on your needles. <laughs> we're, 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 I was going to say secreting, that's the wrong word. 
<laughs> sneaking. That's the word. We're secreting socks. We're secreting socks. So there's my lovely sock. Isn't it fabulous? And I'm quite, you know, I'm not really that far off done. This one's 60 stitches. I thought about it for a while and I thought, because the ones you were trying on were 64 and they were a little bit big, she's obviously got skinny little ankles, really. Her feet are fairly adult size now. They're a UK size four. So I thought, right, I'll do 60 stitches. And I got her to try it on actually last night and it, it fits nicely. It's quite snug, but once it's been washed and you know, once you've worn it a little bit, that all loosens off, doesn't it? So I think it's better um, like this. And it fits on my sock blocker like, you know, fine. So I'm sure it'll be fine. So I took a bit of time to think about where to put my heel within the sequence. I looked on, there's not that many projects on Ravelry. I think a lot of people hoard it like me. I don't think a lot of people have knit up their Nyan cat. So if you've got some, get it knit up. So I thought, you know, I thought, well, if I put it anywhere other than where I've put it here, although, you know, it does kind of disrupt a little bit, doesn't it? Because you've got more stitches here and I didn't want skinnier rainbow stripes. Do you see what I'm saying? So I thought if I put it in here at the end of a rainbow when it changes back to the navy, then it just goes, you know, navy through to the navy heel. And then you pick up. And what I did was I made sure I had a little bit of the navy left when I started the heel. You know, a bit, little bit of the navy on the main yarn left. So, because what I do, I basically just, you know, I'll stop knitting the leg I won't, I don't cut the main yarn. I then just knit the heel and heel flap and heel turn with the contrast. I'll then pick up one side of the heel with my contrast color. And then I'll be back to where my main yarn is on my sock. So I'll then cut the contrast and then carry on with the main yarn, picking it up on the other side with the main yarn. So I thought if I had a little bit of the navy left on my main yarn, then I'd be picking up navy on navy. And I wouldn't get, because sometimes you can get little blips of colour here. Do you know when you've got a contrast heel? So, and it worked out really, really well. I think it looks really clean looking. Can you see? I'll hold it close. You know, you said that you thought about where you were going to put the heel. Yeah. Uh, how do you put the heel where you want it to go rather than where it ends up? Because did, we, did you just, did you just mean you keep on knitting on yeah, there? You yeah. just do a longer leg? I, I did a slightly longer leg than I would right. normally do. Yeah, because right. I wanted to start in the pink. I didn't want to start, I didn't want to do a navy cuff and then start into navy and then rainbow. Right. I thought that would all be too much navy. I wanted to start at the beginning of a pink stripe. Right. So I just thought, right, I'll knit through to the end. Of... You wanted to, and, and how is it you've got th that stripe to go directly below the cuff without the pink going into the cuff? Because you just Could, Well, the cuff that. is knit with that. Oh, it's the a different The cuff yarn. is knit with the navy. It's a different yarn. Yeah. Well, that's how you did it then. Yeah, and then you just, you know, you stop knitting the cuff and start on your leg. I understand it. So I'm really enjoying those. I'm really enjoying the, you know, the rainbowness of them. I'm not a huge rainbow fan. I will be honest with you. It's not normally my thing, rainbow. I'm more of a subtle coloured person, I think. But I do really like this. But like I said before, the, I've got the rainbow the wrong way around. Look, my red is at the bottom. So I think, oh. I think if I'd have pulled from the centre, then I would, it would have been the other way around. But I'm not bothered. It doesn't really matter, does it, in the grand scheme of things. And I don't like pulling from the centre. I always just pull from the outside because I don't like the way that when you pull from the centre, it obviously collapses in on itself, doesn't it? And you end up with, A, you end up with like a flat cake, don't you? But then also it can make a cone, a kind of cone, can't it, as you pull it out. And I don't like all that business. So I just always pull from the outside. So that's my sneaked in Well, I suggest sock. you get ready with your next pair of socks. Okay. Because I'm going to be asking within seconds. Fine. Actually, what is on your needles? Okay. Rather than the snucky, naughty ones. Although... You're all on my side for sneaking in a sock, aren't you? But the, the naughty ones always seem a bit more exciting, maybe. 
Well, that one is very exciting, I think, in my opinion. Well, it is considering how long you haven't knit with the yarn. And look at my cute little notebook in there. Oh, metallic. What do you use that for? Because, because this is a 60 stitch sock, I've never knit that before. So I just wanted to make a note of my heel flap, you know, what I do on my heel flap and the heel turn, more importantly. Um, because I'd never knit a 60 stitch, or oh, it'll be it's 30 stitch effectively, isn't it? Heel turn. So I just, I, I fiddled about with it and just worked out a bit of maths and, you know, and, and did it. And I like the way it looks, but I wrote it down. That's wonderful. Thank you. Uh, so, Kay Jones. Yes. What's on your needles? Here we go. It's not another sock, is it? It might be another sock. Oh. Because, no, listen to me. Everybody knows I was on sock restrictions last time and we can't have none of that so I'm rebelling But I started this when we went away and it's the spangle base Love that word and the colorway is otterlie. Is that how you would say that? I think it's otterlie. Is that right Deb? Beautiful yarn, superwash merino, nylon and stellina and I was gonna knit some blueberry waffle socks with this and then when I cast it on, I just thought, do you know what? I just want to do plain socks. So I'm just knitting plain socks. And this is the yarn. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I love it. And it has got sparkles in. I'm not sure where the sparkles are going to. You might be able to just see them. Oh, it's just gorgeous. I just absolutely love it. And here's my little sock. Like I said, I've not done very much. This is on DPMs. So here it is. Oh, it's knitting up so nice. It's just so pretty. And I do think, I've, I've really enjoyed this past couple of weeks, I've really enjoyed having lots of plain socks. When I say plain, you know what I mean, vanilla, on the needles. Because it's just easy to pick up, isn't it, and just knit a few rows on, and that's been really nice. So this one I'm knitting on DPNs, on my new favourite, and I think I've been saying it wrong. I was watching Nathan the other day, and he loves these needles, and he was saying chow goo. Now I've been saying Chiagu, I think I've been saying it wrong, so is it, I'm going to say Chiagu because that sounds like it's more right than the way I was saying it. Um, and I'm, I knit on, and I think there's quite a variation on this, but I knit generally a sock like this on four needles and I knit round with the fifth. And I know a lot of people have their stitches on three needles and knit with the fourth, and I do do that sometimes. I find it much easier working the heel flap and heel turn and picking up the gusset stitches and doing the toe decreases when it's on four because everything divides evenly, doesn't it? So, you know, you've got two, you have two needles on the front, two needles on the back. You know, for your toe, you're doing the decreases like this, so either end. And for your gusset, you know, you're picking up and again, it's, it's even you know everything's equal and the maths work out and I have like I say I have knit um, gusset and heel flaps with three needles before but I can't remember how I how I did it it was uh, followed Susan B Anderson's pattern so you know so you obviously can easily do it but I just find the maths makes more sense doing it that way and I manage not to get I don't really get ladders I don't know if I can hold that close enough but don't really get ladders and again I was watching lovely Susan recently and she showed how she knits on her DPNs and she doesn't get ladders at all um, and I kind of do a similar thing except she was knitting and again this could be a variation with everybody but she was knitting um, be difficult to show but she was like putting a needle in and going below the existing needle you know the one on the one to your right so she was kind of knitting underneath her DPNs, if that makes sense. I knit on top. So I, you know, my DPNs are underneath and I'm knitting up. I don't know if that's very different if, you know, a lot of people knit that way. But I love it. That looks different. To... It just looks different. It's like standing out a little bit more. Um, I suppose it's stitch definition is what you'd say. It's just the yarn. It's different, isn't What's it? the yarn again? It's Deb's yarn. It's it'll you know your stitch definition is different depending on the ply of the yarn. This is a two ply, and I think my nylon cat is a two ply as well. It looks like ropes running down the sock. Yeah, it's because it's it, because if you look at the yarn, it does look like a rope. It's funny though because it's two ply. Um, 
you know, you're getting real defined lines, yeah. and it's like it, it. I mean, it looks slightly patterned. Oh right. I think oh. if you look at the the. the I know what you body, mean. Yeah, and it is. It's all down to the ply of the yarn. It's nice. It's lovely. So if you got a yarn on a, a similar basin with the same ply, yes, it'd look the same. Yeah, well, my Nyan cat is um, the same. That's the two ply. Yeah, that's the two ply. So that's not that then. That's his four ply. No, four ply is the <laughs> four ply is the weight. Oh, it's like four ply is what um, we call. Isn't a hundred grams the weight? No, no, no. I don't mean the physical weight of the ball. I mean the weight of the yarn. So like this is a fingering weight, but we call it four ply. Oh right, okay. It is quite confusing. So it's the thickness. Isn't it? The thickness. Right. Thank you, yes. So when we're talking about thickness we say weight. Yes. Right. What do we talk about when we want the weight? The weight? Oh right, so it's the same thing. Well I suppose. Uh, that's but, confusing. You know, depending on what the context of the conversation is, you will know which you're referring to. Okay. If you say it's a finger in weight, you wouldn't think it weighed that because that's not it a weigh, weight. It weighs as much as my fingers. <laughs> so, you know. Right. So that's my lovely, lovely spangle sock with my lovely chow goose Nathan. And that's uh, Stelina in there. It is. Well, speaking of Nathan. Debs does a spangle gold, which I've had before as well, which is fabulous. Speaking of Nathan, he has a new theme tune for his podcast. Does he? Oh. Ooh, Nathan, how we love your podcast. Who Nathan, how Carol. we love your podcast. Carol's an absolute star. Kaznitz. Go onto our Instagram feed, Kaznitz, and have a look what she did. Just brilliant. Brilliant, Carol. We love uh, you. We love it's marvellous. Brilliant. Yeah. I've spoken enough. It's your turn. Right. Well, Dan yeah, yeah. Jones. That's what everyone is thinking. Everyone's good thinking. To have a cup of Could tea. you please be quiet? I'm drinking. I never oh, show you what I'm drinking. Goodness. I'm obviously in that frame of mind today where I'm just going to show everything. But I'm having just a normal cup of tea. But look, it's <laughs> Chatsworth. What's that? Uh? You announce it as if that's not what you normally do. I don't. We don't normally <laughs> say what we're drinking, do we? <laughs> I think everyone knows your opinion. Although, oh, no, no. I think I, I might. Uh, she did. Tea. She did once on a podcast. <laughs> And I cut it. She did a taste test, didn't you? And I cut it out, didn't I? I cut the whole thing out. <laughs> because, it's, well, it, she did a like what she like had. It. And we totally get that, you know, lots of you. Each and, to and their try, own. Each to their own. And, you know, the one thing we didn't want to do is we didn't want to, you know, make anyone think we had a problem with people who, who drink, you know, those types of teas. We certainly don't. No. So that's why it's funny then that you say, oh, well, today I'm drinking tea. <laughs> because... I I have um, two cups of tea, normal tea, in the morning, and then I just drink peppermint tea. And then eighty-four tea cups of peppermint, peppermint tea. tea. But I, look, I've I'm set drinking... up a drip. <laughs> we do drink a lot of peppermint tea, but you know, drip of peppermint. It's not bad for you, is it? Cleansed, baby. I'm drinking lovely Chatsworth blend because when you when you stay in a Chatsworth cottage, what's the matter? What are you laughing at? That's so posh. Have you ever seen that written on a 40 Chatsworth classic oh. blend tea bags in a foil pouch? They were indeed in a foil pouch. It's, it means Does not... it say that on the back of No, look, you know, look, foil pouch. They're not always in a foil pouch, are they? And does that change the taste? Well, I think it just, no, I don't think it changes the taste. I think it's it just, just increases the price. No, well, no, the, as I was saying before I was interrupted, when you stay in a Chatsworth cottage, they leave you a little tea tray. That welcome, is true. a welcome tea tray. Yes. And you get a box of tea bags. You, do. you get a packet of coffee. Yes. Chatsworth blend coffee. You get some jam. Yes. And some Which biscuits. Which we didn't really like very much, did we? Wasn't impressed with the strawberry jam. It was Just too sweet. It was very very sweet. It didn't seem like there was enough fruit in it to me. But you know, you get it for nothing. So. We ate it and some biscuits. So this was on the tea tray this time. So I am drinking chat, lovely Chatsworth blend. If you ever go to Chatsworth, it's well worth picking up a box because it is lovely tea. It's really nice. Is it? It is really nice. Do you want to have a smell? No. No. Okay. Thanks for the offer. Can I talk about a knitting? Carry on. This is a knitting podcast. I am very sorry. Okay. Dan Jones. Yes. What's on your knitting? Uh, well, speaking of Nathan, I am knitting the Vanishing Point hat. 
Look at this. And I've been knitting look, extremely Nathan, look, look, look. hard on this. And you'll be thinking, he's not done anything. But you have to knit twice I've, as much. I've been going like a train, I'm telling you. I mean, seriously, I have not stopped knitting this project. And you can see there at the top how um, I'm now getting into the, the, the first pattern repeat. And I'll, I'll be really honest with you. I started off and I, I was really happy and going for it. And then I suppose I got to about halfway up the, the, the first, yeah, sort of halfway through the first diamond. And I started to say to you, I'm um, getting a bit bored. Yes. Yeah. And that's me being stupid because what the pattern is doing is, and this is why it's so clever is it gets you to a point where you've done the technique and, and you're doing it, you're doing it, and you've got it. And I totally have. I totally did get it and everything was cool, everything was working and I'm progressing through the pattern and then it changes. And that for me is clever because it allows you to get into a zone where you think, oh, I've got this now, I'm away. And I'm in this place now with my knitting where I want a challenge. To have a pattern like this, I, I mean, it's interesting because I'm gonna talk about the Declan's hat um, in, 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 a, in a little bit. But if you remember when I knit the Declan's hat, one of the things that was frustrating me was at no point did I feel like it had allowed me to just get into the flow of using cable needles because it was always, for me, it just felt like it was always changing. This is quite the opposite. And do you know what? That for me is very clever design. I, I've come at this as a, a total beginner, as a having, you know, Kay sat next to me helping me with everything. And then suddenly I'm in a position where I'm doing something which Kay's never done before. And, uh, you know, it, it, it's difficult to sort of find your route through, even if you're on YouTube, or certainly I found. The only really good tutorials I found were Nathan's, apart from that other one that I put on the uh, double knitting tutorial playlist. Mm -hmm. What I really love about the pattern is that it's so clear it's sending you to tutorials where it's needed um, and then it gives you the opportunity to get into a flow and then once you've nailed that bit it then just changes things up and makes things a little bit harder again and you can see as you get through the pattern it's going to get progressively harder so i'm now feeling a lot more positive than i was when i was about halfway through that diamond oh. now i'm into it's like a crown the, yeah i think it's supposed to be oh. now i'm into that second uh, that first repeat I'm now in a position where I'm starting to read the knitting, which... I was like, what? what? That's What's going mental. On? He's like, I don't really need to look at the pattern, I can read my knitting. I mean, you, you, <laughs> to, to, to get your, you, you know, to get the repeat right, you obviously need to refer to the pattern. But then once, you, once you've done the first round and you've got the base of the first star in, mm. or, or diamond, you don't need to look again. And that for me, again, is a very clever um, mm. thing within a pattern. If, you know, it just flow, mm. that's flow. That is. Everybody the... loves that, I think, where a pattern. Flow. Yeah. Yes. And, and the Yoda of pattern flow is Susie Gawley. Yes. With the bank head. Yes. The ultimate. And we're going to talk more about that, aren't we, later? Are we? Susie. Are we? Yes. Why? You'll see. Oh, okay. That's exciting. You will see. I don't know what she's talking about. He does. Um, so, well, I don't because okay. I don't know who's won the round yet. Oh, right. Well, we spoke about this regardless. Me and you spoke about this. It doesn't matter. What are you talking about? The, this particular pattern, we spoke about it. Which pattern? The, another pattern by Susie Gawley. Who's pretty my hair? I can't remember the name. <laughs> <laughs> well, according to Kay, Susie Gawley has a pattern out called... <laughs> I've just I, mean, I don't believe it. Okay, so um, I'm loving this, really, really loving this. What I would uh, suggest to anyone is if you fancy giving it a go, start with something simple, but then don't stop. I could have stopped, couldn't I? There was points mm. where you said, just stop, you've done it now. When you start anything new, I think you do owe it to yourself to push it through to an end point. And knitting a coaster with, with you know, knit, knit two together uh, ends, for me, didn't feel like an appropriate mm. end point. I wanted to get to a pattern. And now I've got to a pattern, it takes a long time, but it's really enjoyable and it's making me 
interested in lots of other things to do with knitting. It's made me a better knitter. So uh, vanishing point, excellent pattern. Um, so that's enough vanishing point. I think we should find out what other socks. Oh. No, I'm, I'm having a sock break. I do have more socks. <laughs> I'm like Zena's last episode. Hers was called Socks and Blankets. That's just uh, what I'm like this time. Uh, oh, Zena. We're like twins. We're like podcast twins. This is my... Is it my turn? Yes. Oh, this is my pinky purple blanket. I've done quite a lot on it, so I thought I'd just show you. And look at these mini... I say minis, the ginormous, really, that I got yesterday from the wool barn. Lovely Maya had an update on, I think it was Sunday, and I managed to grab this little set of minis. Oh, look at that, look at minis. They're 20 grams each. Have you seen these minis? <laughs> they're, they're ginormous. ginormous. <laughs> they are, I and mean, they're 20 grams each. They're huge, and I'm gonna share these with a friend who's knitting a blanket as well. A friend who, she knows who she is, but she's, <laughs> um, she's just, oh, she might not want me to say. No, 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 it just it sounded like she had, uh, What's that where you have two personalities? She knows who she is. She knows who she is. Um, she's just been so lovely these past couple of weeks in particular. I mean, always, but this, these last two weeks in particular, she's just been such a help to me. Um, so I'm going to split these and send half to her. They're beautiful. And I think what I'm going to do with these, I'm just ready to almost start my May block. Do you know on my stitching time blanket? Because it's May on Monday, I believe. Is that right? I think it's Monday. So I'm going to start my May block on Monday and I think I'm going to use these. I'm going to use five of them because there's nine blocks. So I'm going to put one in the middle and then one in each corner and then put four other ones that sort of coordinate. Because I just love these sorts of colours and May was like, because it's my birthday month, it was like all my favourite colours and this, this, so I'm going to use these in that. But where I'm up to, and look what I did this morning, what have I done with it? I was watching an old Little Bobbins this morning, because um, I was up early, because that's just me at the minute. And she was, she winds these little cakes on her thumb. And I thought, oh, I'm going to have a go at that. And I got one of my little minis and look, I wound it into one of these little sort of cake things aren't they cute i don't know whether it really works but it was kind of fun to do i'll show you where i'm up to on the blanket what i decided to do do you know how i was knitting it in like with the step thing going on i decided to actually make it the width that i wanted and start you know then getting it into a rectangle shape so I had a chat with Bryony and we measured it out and she told me how big she wanted it and I'm going to knit it to 15 squares across. I think I've got, hang on, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 now. I've only got one more to put on. So if you can see, it, it did the sort of steppy thing. It's hard to show these blankets, aren't they? It did the kind of steppy thing like that and then I've just started, you can see I've got this big long line now. Sorry, Dan. So I've just got one more to add there and then that'll be the width that she wanted it, which is a nice width. It's kind of, I don't know how big that is really, but it's plenty big enough for a little kind of lap blanket. Um, so I've just been adding in along the bottom here. I think all these might be new. This one is hedgerow yarns, which I've never tried before. Lovely Sarah. Sarah Hepworth sent me a tiny mini of that. It's really nice, Sarah. I love that. That one's a Sesame Street, which I love. I can never remember which ones they are. What? But oh. It's a Sesame Street okay. colourway, but I can't remember which character that is. It's another crafty girl, that one. That one... Oh, that's from... Yes, it's from Juliana at Think Then. Juliana's fibre, she sent me a mini, again I say mini, it was ginormous, of a gradient, beautiful. That's an opal from the Christmas mini ball advent calendar thingy. That one's some Cascade Heritage print from Sarah Hepworth again, and I just love that yarn. And then that one, I believe, is Owl About Yarn. Um, so I've just got one more to add on there, and then I'm going to start... I'll work like the row on top of that and I'll start squaring it all off. So I've done a lot on that these these past couple of weeks just because it's been 
you know, it's been nice and easy for me to pick up and I just find it such a joy, you know, picking out the colours and deciding which one to do next. It's just been a lovely thing to work on. And I love that one. That was another, I think that was another Sesame Street colourway, that one. I love that one. Browns and pinks. Beautiful. Gorgeous. So, still absolutely loving the project. And I actually ordered myself a pair, sorry. I ordered myself a pair of 2.75mm Chow Goos. Ooh, amazing. Which I'm now using for that because I'm completely lovely. addicted to Chow Goos. I bet you are. Is it your turn? Yes, it is my turn. Brilliant. Um, I, I'm just meant to say, actually, because I, I didn't say, um, this is knit by numbers. Oh, yes, John Arben. Yeah, look. John Ar it's the John Arbor, John Arbon, 100% Merino, the Knit by Numbers. It's non-superwash, but you're right, Dan. Can you see how fluffy it is? You can see, can't you? Can you see how the halo on it? That's getting worse. Well, I, I think this will pill like the devil. And I didn't think it would pill because it's non-superwash. That, you know, that shouldn't stop you using it, but I think it sh you should be aware of it, certainly. Well, I, I, um, I, I won't be reaching for it again. Right, okay, because that <laughs> is incredibly, incredibly fluffy, that, and I wouldn't expect that. So if you're looking for something fluffy that you want very, to get... It's very, very soft, and I think... Progressively. The progressive, softer... Progressively fluffy. Then I think they say, don't they, the softer the yarn, the more likely it is to pill. I cast on another Declan's hat, because I hadn't done double knitting when I did the last Declan's hat, and my theory is... Uh, I need to do cables again because I've only, I'd only done it once and I don't feel like at any point I got you know much flow going at all with it so I thought if I did a pattern that I'd done before again Kay was saying maybe I should get you something new I said no I think I should do the Declans again because I, I you know when I look at it I've, I've got a fair idea what's going on right. uh, which I think is a positive and I've got to say I did enjoy using cable needles all right, well that's good. Specifically the ridgy one. So this yarn was gifted to me by Zena. Zena! Uh, and it's really nice. It's alpaca, isn't it? Yeah, it feels alpaca. lovely. So uh, I'm going to do a decorous hat and it's going to be a gift for somebody. It's really nice yarn, Zena. It's really, really nice actually. Mm. And it, you need, I just, I love the feel of it. Alpaca can sometimes be a bit scratchy, can't it? And well, it, it doesn't you, really feel scratchy. It's not bad at all, this one. I'm quite sensitive to alpaca and this one's pretty good. It's really, it's just the natural colour. It's really nice, kind of. It's more brown, I think, than you're, you're seeing there. But it's really lovely. And I think it will make a beautiful hat. Declan's hat number two is on the go. How long will this take me? Well, who knows when you consider how much quicker I'm knitting. So, you know, mm. we'll wait and see. Uh, what else is on your needles? Oh, me again. Yes. It's another sock. <laughs> Well, I'm in the land of socks currently, and I'm really enjoying it. So She's I'm not going to, socks. I am. I'm not going to apologise for being in the land of socks. That would be a nice place to be, wouldn't it? This is my Harry, or Dan's, I should say, Harry Potter sock that I'm knitting with the Harry Potter opal. I in can do the, some new socks. I know. Well, I've got two pairs on the go for you. I have finished one sock of the other pair. Excellent. Um, this is the Harry colourway. I showed you this before, it's the discontinued line now that I was very lucky to get and I um, I can't put this on the sock blocker because it's on DPNs, I don't think that would work would it? No, it won't go through the sock blocker, um, I don't want to risk it so I'll show you as best I can where I am up to so I have done the gusset decreases and I'm well into the foot now. It's really pretty. I really like how it's knitting up. I love how you've got all these speckles of the... What's the matter? Nothing. I just totally thought I'd gone wrong, but I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> I love all the kind of speck... You know how it's speckled? Can you see the darker colours? that It's like all the way through and I really like that. The heel is West Yorkshire Spinners Signature 4 Ply in the Cherry Drop, which I thought matched that red perfectly. Again, I'm using Chow Goose and it's 2.5 mils that I use for Dan, just to give him a bit of more extra room and 72 stitches for him. I've been working on that as well, just picking it up and doing a few rows every now and again, and I love it. I really, really love it. Yeah, really enjoying it and I, I think I'll have, because I'm doing the heels in a contrast, I will have a little chunk left 
to put into my blanket. It can't go in my pinky purple because it's not pink or purple, but it can go into the other one. So I don't. I mean, I know you said this before, and you know, you maybe think as <clears throat> the the socks progress, you'll start to see it more and more. But I don't understand how. I don't think Harry Potter when I look at that sock. No, neither do I. Um, I don't know, I said that before, didn't I? I don't know where the inspiration for the colour comes from. I mean, if you look at the picture there, I mean, their uniforms are not blue, are they? They're grey. I don't think that picture really reflects the colour. There is some red on his cape, but you know, his uniform is grey, isn't it? And obviously his house colours are burgundy and gold which is not not that. So I don't know where the colour inspiration comes from. Were you in a house when you were at school? No, they didn't have all that when I was little. D you didn't have like a, I don't know what I'm you really call really old. It. I mean, that's quite a modern What did thing. you say? I'm really old, <laughs> aren't I? I didn't, I didn't go to a posh school, you know, a private school like you. Brian has a house. Yeah, that's now though. I think it, the, it's more popular now, isn't it? We didn't have that at all when I was... I'm trying to think when I went to secondary school, because I went to a state secondary school, if we had houses. Right. We didn't have houses in secondary school. I think there was into house things. What else is on my needles? Well, for the first time, I think, ever, uh, I'm part way through a row, and I really need to finish it before ah. I show it. That never happens with me. Does what I did was, when I picked this up, I'm gonna do a I thought one. that I was doing a knit to pearl to rib, and I looked, and I... The first two stitches, there was there was a, a, a knit and a pearl, and I thought, oh no, I've blooming gone wrong on the first two stitches. How do you? But I haven't because um, it's a one by one rib. Oh. Thank goodness, it's a one by one twisted rib. I'm using uh, Chiagu's. <laughs> You're gonna say it might be that. Well, it, that's just what I call it. Okay. So if I'm wrong. I'm happy to be wrong. How are you finding them? I've not even asked Very you. Very nice. You like them? Yeah. Ah. Yeah, yeah, that, that bit's really good. Yeah. And the cable is really good. I love the cable. It's, it's much better than the Knit Pro. It's not got the memory going on, has no, it? No, no, yeah. it doesn't feel... Well, I'll find out the further through the sock I get, but yeah. at the moment it doesn't feel like I'm wrestling an octopus, which is what uh, the others have felt like. Mm. Uh, the yarn's brilliant. Oh, should we show it? Yeah. I'll show it. It's my project. Well, I was just seeing if okay. you've got the tag, darling, which is highly Look, look, look how different. I see, I think, you know, I look at that and I think, oh, no, I'm not sure. But then I look at that and I think... I think I've think, stuffed it inside. Yes, yes, I know, I know. <laughs> and I, I just, you know, it, it's interesting. We're doing these reviews, aren't we? Um, mm. And the second part, actually, the, the, the working yarn review for the Malabrigo sock mm. went out yesterday. Oh, right. And I think that there is a... A real, for me, right, if I looked at that, I probably would think it was a bit too busy for me. I think, I'm, I'm not drawn, right. I'm not drawn to that. All right. Uh, I knit with that because it's opal and you gave it to me. Okay. But I wouldn't have bought it. Ah. But if you'd shown me that, I'd have gone, oh. Really nice. I have to have it. So I do think that, I don't know if other people do this, and they certainly should, I don't know, I mean magazines must do it. They, they must sort of knit it up and then show what it looks like in there. Yes, yeah. they do reviews, yeah. yeah. I can see a passion for magazine reviews coming. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I love the, the purple stripe. And um, the thing I like the best about it is how it feels. It's thick, isn't it? It's the... It's just... Um, opal um, eight ply, is it? Here we go. Yes. I stuffed it in there so I didn't lose it. Do you um, think he did that? It is. Uh, it is the... Opal Wintermond. Wintermond. <laughs> the colourway is, well, <laughs> it's a German word. That's a ply. Yeah. Yeah. I love, well, yeah. Yes. It's a ply, which I think is like a DK or worsted. And it's Sonnenwend. Sonnenwend. I can't remember what that means, actually. Um, but it's very pretty. It is. Purples and golds and blues. It really is. It's a lovely thing uh, to knit. The needles are really good. Personally, I probably wouldn't choose to knit on the other needles again. Oh, gosh. That's really interesting. Why? Because I hadn't asked you before, and you loved the wooden ones, and you were like all about... Well, I love the wooden ones. I, I love the... It's the, this. The it's this. It's the cable. It's this. I know. The needles are fine. Yeah. 
but that is not right. I, I was going to do some DPM ones, but Kay was really keen. Well, she just bought me these Jagus and um, set me off going. I was with like, it. just try it. I want to so, know what you think. And they're three point seven five mils. Yeah, because you knit tight. What so. else could I knit with these? Um, what else could you knit with it? Well, you could do shawls and things, but you don't knit shawls on it. So. No. And maybe I should do a, a Messalina though one day. Well, could it's a forty-eight stitch sock that one. Right. So. I had no idea. No, well, I know that's what I'm saying. Thank you. That's okay. Are you going to show something else? Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah. Right. You need to think, you know, just right. progressively forward. Yeah. This is my last. Get with the plan, yeah? Stop clicking your fingers at me or so I'll punch you. Right. Go on, go on. Just stop. Punch me, punch me. You know me. what I feel about the clicking fingers business. Sorry. Um. Right. Right. Now. This now. Is very, look, in my lovely fondant fibre bag. She's oh. not been repeating, has she, at the start of podcasts? Oh. I'm That's trying such a to be shame. good. I'm trying to no. be good. We like it when you did that. Mm. That's fancy. I know. Very fancy it looks bag a bit like from a dress. Deb. Well, it's, it's a Paris theme, isn't it? So I think it's meant to be sort of Parisian. It oh, does right, kind okay. of look Parisian. Right. Let me get that out. Well, we watched M May Grey, didn't we? Oh, yeah, we did. That was set in Paris. That was quite a good fun. We were in Atkinson. We yeah. liked it. Didn't Interesting. We? Slow burner. Yeah, but I did enjoy it, actually. Yeah, me too. It and they're going to do a series, so mm. Inspector May Grey. It's pretty Liked good. It. The problem is you always expect him to do something funny. You do. Because he's Rowan Atkinson. Atkinson. You do, when he's very straight, very quite droll. To the beach. <laughs> quite droll. Um, right. Do you know how I spoke, probably last time and the time before, that I was designing something new? Yes, Kay. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I've finished designing that thing. <gasps> the pattern is written up and it's currently with two people who are test knitting it for me. I would like one more test knitter. It's a pair of socks. I will tell you that now. You probably might have gathered that already. Well, maybe you didn't. It's a pair of socks and there's two sizes. Tilly Trout guessed it was frilly knickers, I think. <laughs> Did she? Yeah. Oh, Tilly. Oh, I could call them Tilly's knick Tilly's frilly knickers. It's, so it's a pair of socks. There's two sizes in the pattern. So um, I could do with a test knitter to knit me the 72 stitch sock. So when you've seen it, if you fancy knit test knitting it for me, the 72 stitch size, then just PM me on Ravelry. That would be lovely. The, yes? Um... What's the time scales? Well, I've not couple really, of weeks really. You know, once you've knit one sock, then you know I'm, I'll be good to go, kind of thing. Obviously, because they're both identical. So, a couple of weeks maybe. Yeah, I'm not in any huge rush, but, but I would imagine but, you can but get through. As one soon sock as you get through those other two test knits, you're going to be itching. Well, to get yeah, it out. but you know, I'm I'm quite chilled about it oh she says that now i'm trying to be more <laughs> relaxed about things you'll get all excited well i probably will i know now i'm going to put this on a and you pocket. should i told you before that the inspiration i did say before didn't i the inspiration for this pattern it's a sock was the railway children my particular inspiration for it was the, the house that they go to live in in Yorkshire is called Three Chimneys because it has it has three chimneys. It's like a farmhouse and it has three chimneys. And obviously there's a lot of steam trains in it and they also have... Chimneys. Are they called chimneys on a steam train? Smokestacks. Smokestacks. You know, it's a chimney. It's a chimney, effectively. So there was lots of chimney things going on. So the pattern is actually called Three Chimneys. And the pattern on the sock is intended to look like little chimneys with smoke coming out of the top. Mm. But it also reminds me, mm. in the film, there's a scene in the film, if you've watched it, you'll know where, which this scene is, where Mr Perks, who's the porter at the railway station, has to take up this huge wicker hamper of, of things for the children's mother. She's got flu and she's not very well and... Um, this I won't tell you the actual full story but basically they get this hamper of things to help her get well and he takes it up on his little trike oh, every time me and Bryony see that we're like oh we'd love one of those I can't ride a bike 
There's a revelation for you. I can't ride a bike. Well, no, no. I've you never can. been able to ride a bike. I can. can't. I fall off. She, she's fine and then she loses confidence. And I fall so off. So she can ride it, but then she loses confidence and falls off. The issue, the reason I can't really ride a bike is because I didn't get a bike until I was a teenager. The um, last time you tried to ride a bike, actually, you didn't fall off. You just rode into a hedge. Well, that's, that's good as falling off, isn't it? Yeah, I remember you I, used to go, I can't stop, I can't stop. No, I I got a bike, like I said, when I was a teenager, and I used to go out on it and, you know, just practice, and I was never, never very confident. And I had one day where I used to ride along this path, and to the right of the path there was, like, a slope down to a field at the bottom. And one day I just, I went off, I went down this slope and came off the bike and it was just off. I didn't really hurt myself badly or anything, but I just, it put the fear of God into me. So I can't ride a bike. So anyway, Mr. Perks has like a three-wheeler and he has a little basket on the back and me and Brian are like, oh, we'd love one of those. So he, he pedals up to the house from the station and he's got this huge wicker basket on the back. And the pattern also reminds me of this wicker basket. So there's lots of inspiration. This is the first one that I knit, and I changed it just very slightly from this, so I'll show you. This was the first sock, so you can see it's got a lovely textured pattern on it, and I think it looks like little chimneys. You know, the little stocking stitch section here, and then this is the smoke coming out of the chimney. But it also is effectively, it's a modified basket weave. So that reminds me of the basket. So it's kind of twofold, really. Uh, and I really love it. It's very squishy, you know, the, the text, because there's lots of texture in it, it's very squishy. And I just, I really, really love it. The, I've, it's a heel flapping and gusset and heel turn. And I've, I've modified, it's a modified slip stitch pattern on the heel. So there are slip stitches, but I did it so that it lines up with the actual pattern running down. This was the first one that I knit and I did a square heel on this one. And I wasn't particularly happy with it, so I've changed it on the actual sock, and I'll show you that in a minute. This one I knit with some yarn that lovely Amber sent me, and I love it. And I haven't actually knit the second one of this yet. Um, there was no sort of desperate rush to knit the second one because I, I wanted to knit it in the actual yarn. So for this one I used Leading Men Fibre Arts in Spotlight, and it was Stage Kiss. So I will knit the second one of that at some point. So that was the first one. And then, um, so what I did was I wanted a really special yarn. And there's a scene in the film again where it's Bobby's birthday. Bobby is one of the characters. And she wears, she's got a particular dress on and it's like a lavender with a grey sort of background, really pretty. And I just loved that colour. So I wanted something along the lines of, of like a lavender grey... So I asked the lovely Michelle at Dancing Dog Dye Works if she could dye me up some, and she did, and it's beautiful. So it's on her Glitter Paws base. Now, I have suggested a name to Michelle, so I won't tell you the colourway name at the moment, because um, I've not absolutely confirmed that with her, but it will have a colourway name that is relevant to that scene I've just told you about in the film. And here is the second sock. What's the second sock? Well, it's the first sock of of the pair. So this is the colour. Isn't it lovely? Oh, it's beautiful. I hope you can, you might not be able to see the sparkles. If I hold it close, you might just be able to see the sparkles. If I show you in the skein. That could be bits of coal there, dust coming can, out of the chimney stack. You can see the sparkles. Within the steam. It's beautiful. And can you see the grey undertones? It's really, really pretty. So it's like this lavender periwinkle sort of um, colour with grey undertones and it's beautiful. So that is the first one, really, really pretty. And I'm working on the second one, because obviously with, with socks, you know, you've knit one and then you can write the pattern up. So I did that and I thought, while my test knitters are knitting the sock, I can do the second one at the same time. And then that saves a lot of time if you're doing everything sort of concurrently. So I just cast this on yesterday, so I'm just at that point. And what page is up on Ravelry? Is there a the... pattern page? Is that... There will be, by the time this comes out, there'll be a sort of pattern coming soon page on Ravelry. So it's called Three Chimneys. And the instructions in the pattern are for DPNs, but you can easily knit it, obviously, on Magic Loop if that's your preference. The other reason I wanted to knit 
this pattern on DPNs is because back when the book was written, The Railway Children is a book, it was written in 1906, I think, when we looked at it, wasn't yes. it? By Edith, right. Edith Nesbitt. Yeah. People will have knit socks back then and they would have knit them on double points. They obviously wouldn't have had magic loop back then. So that just, the whole feel of it, it just made it, just made it more, not atmospheric, that's the wrong word, but it seemed more relevant to the pattern that I actually knit it on DPNs. If you want to, oh, and Michelle will be putting up pre-orders in her shop when, I don't know when that'll be yet, but I'll let you know. Um, you know, it'll be close to when or at the same time the pattern comes out. So you can get some of this yarn if you want to. And realistically, when do you think the pattern will be out? I don't know, really. It'll be within the next four weeks. Yes. Yeah. Sometime in May, I would say. And of course, we um, will be, uh, it's probably going to be June, but we will be doing a favourite places to yeah. knit from that particular part of yeah. Yorkshire, exploring all the locations of the film which would be cool so, I mean even if you've not seen the film what we'll be exploring is some beautiful parts of South Yorkshire isn't it no or is it's it, not South Yorkshire where is it I don't really know gosh it's, it's well west. south of us it's going to be West Yorkshire isn't right. it it's more west it's not South Yorkshire where it is it's west more Yorkshire. it's more West Yorkshire where it's set I would think yeah um, and look what I did when I was, I wanted to make sure that the 72 stitch count heel turn would work, you know, when I worked out the maths. So I just knit a little heel turn <laughs> and it did work out. It was fine. But that was quite fun. Just knitting that. So yes. Cool. Anything very more to say excited. about that? I don't think so. I'm very Excellent. excited about it. So if you want to knit me the 72 stitch count sock, then just whiz me a little message on Ravelry. Thank you very much. It's time to find out who's going to win between me and Robin. Oh. So uh, Robin did exceptionally well last time. Will I beat her? Um, I have no idea. Mm. Uh, will I have to do my forfeit or will she have to do her forfeit? My forfeit is to knit something holy. Um, her forfeit is to spin up some fingering weight yarn and knit a square for her, no, Blank crochet a square, crochet for, square her for her blanket. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I think we should find out who's gonna win, shall we? Yes. Cool. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, it's round two of knit or forfeit between me and can you remember who? Yes, it's Robin from the Stitcher Between Pages podcast and here she is. Hi. How are you doing Robin? Doing pretty good thanks, how are you? I'm really good and have you noticed how I'm dressed? I have, yes. I'm going to give everyone a little bit of a, of a show. How am I dressed folks? Can you see? Can you see, can you see my Carillion red stripe on my leg? And why am I dressed like this, Robin? You're Han Solo, and The Force Awakens just came out. Yes, yes, she can <laughs> remember. She's the perfect co-host, yes. I am auditioning for new co-hosts once I've got rid of Kane. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> so here we are, ready for round two of Knit or Forfeit. And Robin did so well in round one. She scored two. She used all her lifelines. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't at all. She scored eight. She used two lifelines. And of course, the questions were six questions on knitting and four questions on medieval history, specifically um, English monarchs from uh, 1000 to, was it 1400? 1450? 1450? I don't think it matters. I don't. It's cool, it's cool. No, it doesn't yeah. matter now. Um, so she did supremely well, um, and she's really put the pressure on me now. So to <laughs> win, I've got to score either more than she has, or if I score the same, I've got to use less lifelines. So there's some real tactics going on here, people. <laughs> so are, are you feeling a little bit easier than last time? Now you get to I ask am. the questions. Yes, yes. I have my questions ready on my, on my notepad. <laughs> are you going to be super mean to me? I bet you are. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> so the lifelines, ladies and gentlemen, anyone who can't remember the lifelines, they are, of course, 50-50. There is Ask Instagram, and there is Text a Friend. 
so I can call in any one of these lifelines at any point, but of course I need to think tactically as well with this too, because if I ask Instagram on the final question, that only gives a very short amount of time for Instagram to help me with the answer. So it's all about the tactics today, and I think we should get cracking. Yes. Yes, yes, let's do it. So are you ready or am I ready? Uh, do you know what, Robin? I love it when I'm actually in the other seat because it just feels, I, I know you would think there's more pressure on, but actually I feel less pressure because I can just sit here and enjoy the show. <laughs> well, let's get cracking then with question one. All right. So question one. Yes. Opal produced different ranges of yarn based on various themes. Yes. Kay has a favorite range that she's knit you two pairs of socks with. Yes. What is this range? I'm going to definitely need some answers. <laughs> <laughs> All okay. right. So, the choices are yes. A, Opal yes. Best Friends. Yes. B, Opal yeah. Van Gogh. Yeah. C, Opal Sweet and Spicy. Yeah. Or D, Opal Little Prince. Okay. This is the this is the moment when I wish that I listened to her more when she tells me what she's knitting. <laughs> I'm sure that's why she's asked this question. Yes. Now, um, what, what what was A again? A was Opal Best Friends. Yeah. And uh, now I'm I'm I think I'm clever enough to know that. And now I'm going to look like an idiot now, when of course <laughs> there will be a range called that, but I don't think that is real. I think that that's a fake one. Give me, give me uh, C again. What was C? C is Opal Sweet and Spicy. Now I've heard of that, so I can't rule that one out yet. What was D? Opal Little Prince. That does not sound familiar. I think it's between B and C. What was B? B was Opal Van Gogh. And of course, that that those are the colour. No, you can't tell me. So I'm just talking to <laughs> to to all of you. <laughs> all of you need to give me the vibes. Van Gogh. I'm sure that's that's a range of colourways, and and I'm sure then that 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 must be the answer. I'm feeling strangely confident because I've been logic. I've used logic. I think. <laughs> Unless my logic is completely insane, which you know it is. Um, so I am going to go with B. Okay. Is he right? Is he to right? Final yes! answer. Yes! Yes! You are. Yes, it is. Opal Van Gogh. Yes. Oh, come on. All right. Question two. Last year, you knitted a bright pink honey cowl, which you nicked in your twins gang cowl. What yarn did you knit it in? Your choices are yes. A, Cascade 220, B, Countess of Lays, C, Malabrigo Worsted, or D, Friends in Fiber. Okay. This, this is awful. because I shouldn't I laugh. I know it's awful. <laughs> I, I knit this for like <laughs> forever. And, oh, okay. I don't think it's, uh, uh, what was A? Cascade 220. It's not that. It's not that because that, that's the yarn that Kay uses uh, religiously for many things, but I specifically for bakery bears themselves. She mm -hmm. uses that in, in the bakery bears knitting process. I think it's the clothes that she knits in Cascade 220. What was D? D was Friends in Fiber. I don't think it was Erica's yarn. I, I mean, I have knit things in Erica's yarn, and oh no, no! <laughs> I'm totally knit. I'm sure I've knit one of these in Erica's yarn, but I am virtually certain because this twin skein cowl is in. It's, in, it's like burnt into my brain. <laughs> Stuck with it forever. Yeah, now the twin skein cowl, I'm pretty sure it was brightly coloured, really pink. This is a toughie because both of these are. I'm, I, I'm worried that Countess Blaze <laughs> is is drawing me towards it because okay. th this thing was so pink, it was mm. like it was a blaze. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <laughs> the, the Malabriga, I'm sure, oh, this is tough, this is tough. I'm, I'm tempted to go with my instinct, and my instinct <laughs> was, <sighs> but she surely wouldn't, 
Oh, I'm going with B, Countess of Blaze. <laughs> All right, Holly, is he right? Is he right? He is! Yes! Yes! <laughs> oh, come on! Countess of Blaze yarn. This is really cool. <laughs> I can't believe I remembered that. I, I could never remember what yarn I was knitting that with when I was knitting with it. <laughs> now, Robin, I'm going to digress for a second because I wanted to ask you, when we uh, spoke before on our first round of Knit or Forfeit, I wanted to ask you about your surname. Yes. Do you know the lineage of your surname? It's Polish. Um, ah. Yep. yep so, so has anyone in your family done family trees? Do you know? <sighs> One of my dad's cousins has. Right. Um, I don't. I don't know what it means. I've always right. wondered what it means, and I'm not sure exactly where we're from. How um, many generations of you have lived in America? It was my great grandfather. So wow. there's, I'm, I guess, third generation okay. born in America. So, did he move around about World War Two time? Uh, nineteen. I want to say nineteen twenties. Oh, so well before. Yeah. Right, interesting, yeah. interesting. That's so cool. I love family tree and, and all that type of yeah. thing. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, with a name like James, <laughs> I have a few issues. <laughs> but, but I have managed, through speaking to my grandparents, had some really interesting names. And, you know, you, you look and you think, I'm going to find something really good here. I'm going to find a link to some royal family in some far off <laughs> land. No, no, no. They were farm labourers. Oh, no. <laughs> I've, got, I've got back to the 1850s. And actually, I got back earlier than that. I got back to the late 1700s. That's Not pretty good. Them. Yeah. They were all tilling the fields in Somerset. <laughs> we should get on with question three. Question three. Yes. You recently discovered a love for Polworth yarn. Yes. Where does the Polworth sheep originate from? Oh. Your choices are A, England. B, the United States of America, C, New Zealand, or D, Australia? Now, you've really thrown me because what I thought <laughs> was going to come up didn't come up. Oh, okay. <laughs> I thought that for some reason I thought Canada was going to come up in there. Ah, nope. And as it, as it hasn't come up in there, I now have a bit of a problem <laughs> because I wouldn't even know where to begin. <laughs> What I do know is, have you knit with Polworth? I have, yeah. It's really nice. I absolutely love it. It's really nice. As I thought Canada, it makes me think, is it the US? Just, I don't think it's Australia. It, it absolutely could be New Zealand, couldn't it? I mean, I think it's got to be between... It. I, I'm... St <sighs> so I feel like I'm going to go with America. Is that your final answer? I don't know now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I'm doing the old who wants to be a millionaire thing and I'm now starting to go heavily towards New Zealand. Um, I am going New Zealand. Is that your final answer? Yes. It is. Is he right? Is he right? No! Oh, no! No! no. They're from Australia. Oh no! No. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't have known no. either. So I I learned something from this question. Uh, I can't oh. believe it. I no. totally, totally. I can't believe it. Okay, I need to really think carefully now. I think lifelines may have to come into this. <laughs> question four. Yes. Susie Gorley famously designed the Bankhead hat. In oh case no. Anybody was not aware. She also has a hat design named after a type of grass. What is the pattern called? Okay. Your choices are A, spear grass, B, rye grass, C, bluegrass, or D, sweet grass. There's one person I love in the world of knitting, it's Susie Gourley. And if I get this wrong, <laughs> my devastation May, may last many, many weeks. <laughs> there, is, there is one there that immediately jumped out at me. Just, I don't think it's sweet grass, and I'm sure it's not blue grass. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, Although, I, think, I think not being blue grass is a reasonable, <laughs> reasonable instinct. <laughs> rye grass, I really like the sound of, and mm -hmm. 
Rye, rye grass draws me in. That that makes you, you could imagine a hat designed that had that name, and and if there isn't one, design one. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably Susie, and do it now. So when I when I give that as my answer, then I'm correct. Um, which leads me to the fact that I think I am going to say Ross. I'm going B Rye grass. You're going B Rye grass. Yes. Is he right? Is he right? No. Oh no. Oh Susie, I'm so sorry. What is it? It's spear grass. Oh so no. So you are so close. And so I was not familiar with this hat pattern, and I looked it up. Right. So it's really pretty, actually. Right. It's right. kind of a chevron pattern. But okay. It has little eyelets, so okay. you could knit it as uh, your forfeit oh. should you lose. <laughs> Ha. Not that we're I, there yet. I There's see still your plenty game, of sister. questions. Yeah. But, but you know what? You have <laughs> just made you've made my forfeit now something which I feel obliged I have to do. <laughs> because because I just Susie, I am so desperately sorry. This is it now. I can't get another one wrong. No. I can of course no. use use lifelines, so this is it. This was my tactic to go all gung ho. Until I was at point break, if you like, and, and, and then pull in the, uh, the lifeline. So come on, before we do question five, I need a drink of water. <laughs> also, mm. I think we should just, you have just revisited what my forfeit is. Yes. My forfeit, as Robbie's just said there, is of course, I have to knit something with holes in. And I'm not allowed to burn the holes in them. No. Nope. Uh, so, <laughs> so I think we've just established that my forfeit is to knit the, was it the spear grass hat? Yes. Yes, cool. Um, and Robin's forfeit, remind everyone what your forfeit is, Robin. So, if I lose, I have yes. to spin enough fingering weight yarn to crochet a square. So I've been working, I actually have been spinning the past couple nights, so I don't know if it's fingering weight, but... <laughs> in practice. In <laughs> practice, practicing. Right. Okay, I'm ready. Hit me with the next question. All right, question five. Yes. How many works in progress do you currently have? I didn't write these. <laughs> these first six questions, you can't blame me. <laughs> oh, no. Four. That's yeah. A. B is five. Yeah. C is six. Yeah. And D, totally unsurprisingly, is seven. I mean, I, I, I have absolutely <laughs> not a clue. Yes. How many this... this surely this would be a tough question for any knitter to answer. <laughs> I'm not sure if I can answer it. <laughs> I have some works in progress that have been languishing, <laughs> and I'm not sure okay. how many there are. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> I am going. Oh, it's I. I don't think it's six or seven. Okay. And I don't think it's four. Okay. Because I can think of four, <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'm sure there's another that I'm, I, I can't remember. <laughs> Um, you see, I've been so obsessed, I've really got into double knitting, mm -hmm. and um, that, that's, that sort of moved my focus just a touch. <sighs> this is, and I can't use, I cannot use a life, oh no. <laughs> that's true. Who would you text? Oh no, 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 no. Right, I'm going five. All right, well, I won't keep you waiting any longer. You're right! Yeah! <laughs> Come on! Come on! Yeah. How could someone get so excited about knowing the amount of projects that they have currently on the needle? <laughs> Question six. Yes. What was the first project that you showed on episode one of your <laughs> podcast? <laughs> oh, crumbs! <laughs> All right. Are you ready for the choices? Do you have any ideas? I have not a clue. Okay. Here we go. Yes. A. A pair of socks. B. A cowl. C. A scarf. Or D. A hat. I. I am going to. I'm going to have to think that I showed. But that could be totally wrong here. You see, it could be a hat. Um, mm -hmm. But my instinct tells me the first thing that I ever tried to knit was a scarf. Okay. And uh, I ended up frogging it because I did such a <laughs> bad, 
I did such a bad job. I mean, I, I was knitting it on straights. I think they were nylon needles. The yarn, as I recall, was pretty scratchy. Oh, no. But the, it, it, was, it was about the process. Right. It was about, you know, learning how to do it. And that is the first thing I knit on. And I would have thought that me approaching the podcast, that I would have thought that I should show the first thing I'd ever knit. Mm-hmm. But then there's another bit of me that thinks I was too ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, do you know what? Let's, what? Ask, let's ask Instagram. Right. All right. I have Instagrammed out. Let's see if I get an answer. Shall we crack on with the next question? Yes, we cool. shall. And even better, this is the first of the history questions. Oh. Question seven. Who were the first two monarchs to be buried at Westminster Abbey. A, Edward the, Con- Edward the Confessor and William the Conqueror. B, William the Conqueror and Edward I. C, Henry III and Edward I. Or D, Edward the Confessor and Henry III. <sighs> Let me know if you want the question and the answers again. <laughs> oh... I, I'm 99% certain that one of them, oh, maybe I shouldn't tell you, (laughs) but then I know, I know what I would do if I was you and it's obvious Mm -hmm. what you would do. So that, that theory is not going to (laughs) work. I, I'm virtually certain one of the people is Edward the Confessor. Okay. I, I just have a feeling that William the Conqueror wasn't buried in England. Mm-hmm. Um, whereas Henry the Third would have been buried in England. I am right. pressing the button because <laughs> I have the perfect person to ask. She's a knitter. She likes her history. She's called Robin. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> She's called Talia. She presents with her mum the Penhook and Needles oh, podcast. Oh, she would be the right person to ask. I am going to ask Talia. Okay, <laughs> so we can now move on to the next question. Yes, all right. Question eight. Yes. Henry III was known as a particularly devout king. Which of the following was not an aspect of his religious piety? A. Competing with King Louis IX of France over who was the most devout. B. Going on crusade to the Holy Land. C. Making pilgrimages to English shrines, such as Our Lady of Walsingham and the Abbey of St. Albans. Or D. Attending religious services daily. I, I, I think A is right. So, mm-hmm. so, so you know, I, I, I think that that, that that isn't the answer. Um, g- give, me, g- give me C. Uh, C is making pilgrimages to English shrines, such as Our Lady he, of Walsingham and the Abbey of St. Albans. He must have done that. Uh, C was pilgrimages to English shrines. Yeah, he must have done that. And, and D was he went to church. Yeah, daily. Now, that would be such an easy one to do. So he mu- you would have thought he would have done that. Mm-hmm. So that, that makes me think, you see, Richard the Lionheart and other monarchs did lots of very expensive crusades Mm -hmm. and did he but you see it was the ultimate thing to do we are at a critical moment because if i get this one wrong that of course given you know the 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 other two questions outstanding which of course could go completely wrong and Mm -hmm. then i've still lost anyway but i i really need to get this one right Mm -hmm. and my, my instinct i mean but maybe he didn't. He must have gone. But it's the daily bit. But are you trying to catch me up? Go to church daily. I mean, a monarch going to church mm-hmm. daily. I'm going to go D. Are you sure? I'm really not sure. <laughs> but I'm going to go with it anyway. If he writes. No. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> I, was, I was hoping you were going to stick with the crusade. He didn't go on crusade. I don't so believe close. it. I don't you believe so it. Close. That... Oh. I... Oh. <laughs> so close. So close. 
I tell, I'm, I think my logic was right. It was. It was. He didn't go on crusades because there'd been so many expensive crusades that had gone before. Yep, and I'm he actually, such... he promised that he would, but he never did. So you have won, but I am now going to try and fight for some dignity. Yes. I feel a little bit cruel about this one, just oh, so you know. Oh, great. Yep, I did. I thought long and hard about this one, and I decided to keep it in. Oh, do, do, yeah. Do. <laughs> go on, go on. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Queen's College of Oxford University, founded in 1341 by Robert de Egglesfield, was named for which English queen? And the 1341 bit is useful information. Yeah. A, Philippa of Hainault, queen of Edward III. B, Eleanor of Provence, queen of Henry III. C, Joan of Navarre, queen of Henry IV. Or D, Eleanor of Aquitaine, queen of Henry II. Okay. Well, it's it's not uh, Eleanor of Aquitaine. Okay. Because because she was on the throne. Uh, crumbs. Two hundred years earlier than that. Yeah, basically. I don't think it's Henry the Third. Okay. So not Eleanor of. So neither of the Eleanors. I'm gonna go A. Is he right? Is he right? You are. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, I just knocked over my video connection <laughs> with Robin in Chicago. I got that excited. And I'm not even playing to win now. I am playing <laughs> just for honour. Come on! Yes! Come on! Yes! And I thank you because it was the dates that got me that answer. Yep. So yep. it was a mean question, but you really helped me. So thank you for helping yep. me. Question 10. Question 10. Long before the 17th century civil war between the Roundheads and the Royalists, there was the 12th century civil war known as the Anarchy, fought between potential successors of Henry I, Matilda, who was also called Maud, and Stephen. What was a primary cause of the civil war? A, heavy taxation of noble families. B, the death of Henry's son, William. C, rebellious barons. Or D, Matilda's marriage to Geoffrey, Count of Anjou. Oh, you see, <laughs> I know a lot about this, but <sighs> just give me the, 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 the death of the son answer again. Yep, the death of Henry's son, William. That's choice B. I'm going to go with that. You're going with that? Yeah. Is he right? Yes! <laughs> Come on! Come on! Do you know what? Yes. It's so interesting. I don't know if you found this, but when you are in this seat, you you doubt everything. Yes. Yep. <laughs> yep. You forget everything you ever learned about history. What is history? I don't. I don't know what English monarchs are. <laughs> Let's see if I have an answer. Oh, crumbs! Give, give me the one about the two monarchs again. Sure. So this is That's question, question seven. Seven. Cool. Okay. Who were the first two monarchs to be buried at Westminster Abbey? Just A. give me the two answers with the confessors in. Okay. A. Edward the Confessor and William the Conqueror, or D. Edward the Confessor and Henry the Third. I I am going to go with the answer that I thought of before you read any, and that's A. Going with A. No. <laughs> who, no. Is who is it? Who is it? Edward the Confessor and Henry III. No! Yeah, you were right. You had you said William the Conqueror probably wasn't buried in England, and he wasn't. He was buried in Normandy. Uh, <laughs> so silly close. Billy! And Henry I'm a III silly was Billy! The one who rebuilt Westminster Abbey. Yeah. As a, sort of, you know, has grown up now. What a complete so, oh. prune! But you have one more question. Yes, yes, yes. The and first I have an answer. You showed on episode one of your podcast was right. There is some some interesting answers. Oh no, not in agreement. They're not in agreement. Oh no. They're, I mean, this isn't this interesting. <laughs> but I am I am going to bow to the knowledge, and I hope you're right, Penny. <laughs> um, 
No but, pressure. But, but, but Penny Dub <laughs> on Instagram has said, along with some other people as well, but she came back with this answer within two minutes. I was knitting on a hat. So I'm saying hat. You are saying hat. Yes. You are right. Yeah! Yes! It was a hat. I think six. That that I should be ashamed of myself. <laughs> but do you know what? I'm not. And I'm not no. big, I'm not ashamed because I've been beaten by a better competitor, but also those questions were tough. They were but also also I loved all those history questions. Yes. Robin, it's been such a pleasure. I hope you've enjoyed this too. I have, yes, it's been great. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. It's been such a pleasure. Hasn't she been amazing, folks? Give her all a round of applause all over the world. <laughs> I can hear them, Robin, I can hear them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, folks, that is it for my round against Robin. And just so you know, all these scores, I've lost this round. Robin has, of course, won this round. So Robin does not have to spin and crochet the arm, but I do have to knit the, what's it called again? The spear. Spear grass. It's a spear grass hat. <laughs> Susie Gooley, I'm coming for it. Yes. yes. Um, so I will be knitting the spear grass hat. Kay will be back right. with the first round of her game of Knittle Forth against Xena, oh, which right. will be super cool. Yeah, it'll be super cool. Yeah. And all our scores, all mine and K scores, will be added together. And at the end, we'll have a total. So of all the times we've played anyone, we'll add those all up. And then K and I will have a grand round at the end Ooh. where all our scores are tallied. <laughs> and we'll see who the ultimate champion of middle okay. group is. So, Robin, thank you so much for playing. Absolutely. Um, and we'll see you soon for more Nittle Group Bye! She made it bearable because I get to knit the spear grass hat Yay. by Susie Gawley. Yay! Susie, Susie, I love that hat. I want to knit it too. Well, I'll be knitting it, so... I know, I might have to knit one. It's lovely. Go and look at the pattern if you've not seen it. Spear grass by Susie Gawley. It's a very, I'll link it in the show It's like a notes. simple lace pattern, but it's really nice. How tricky is lace? It can be very, very simple and... This pattern from Susie is, is, is a really good introduction to lace if you've never knit it because it's just some yarn overs and knit two togethers and things. It's very simple. How challenging do you think I'll find it? Uh, it might be a little challenge, but I'd, it's on, not on as difficult. On the scale of double knitting? Oh, it's not as difficult as that. It's not as complicated as cables. I think it's much easier than cables. We shall see them. Yes. So I shall cast that on and get knitting another of Susie's patterns, which I'm really excited about. So whilst it's a forfeit, it's not really. And do you know what? That's been my favorite so far of the knit or forfeits that I've been involved in. I haven't seen it yet. Was it good? <laughs> what I loved about that was Robin's just- Oh, she's lovely. Marvelous. I love Robin, she's and so cute. What I really loved about that was sitting down with someone. It's rare that I get to sit down with someone who knows a lot more than I do about the things that I really love. And you know, she even knew that I was dressed as Han Solo. Oh. <laughs> Why? Well, that was a bit random. What was that all about? Why was that random? Well, it was a bit random. Wasn't it wasn't it? random because, as, w w yes, as we established, I think as we established, oh. it was the day that Star Wars got released. Oh right, okay, and on DVD. Yes, and whilst we got Star Wars a day before everyone in America, they got the DVD about two weeks before we got you it here. You did, you lucky devils. Which was really frustrating because you're desperate to, to get hold of it and see it. I'm getting really excited about the new film now, but you know, we'll, we'll and I mean episode eight here, whilst I think Rogue One will be very good. Anyway, um, so playing against Robin was just the business. And those questions around history mm. were just cool. And what, what I love is, every what I love is, what I'm pleased about is 
when you profess to know a little bit, you're worried that when the pressure's on, that you're going to end up with egg on your face. And actually, every one of those history questions, even the one that I got wrong, I, I could and should have got it right. Because within the working out of the question, I actually gave the answer, but then talked myself out of it, as you tend to do when you're on quiz shows. Mm. That's in the books now. It's now time to get ready for uh, Kay playing against Xena. Yay! Oh, and yay. that won't be next episode because next episode we are doing a part two of our Founding Fathers of uh, Great Britain uh, series and we're going to be exploring uh, Midland Castle, oh, which is where um, Richard III met his wife, um, uh, who was the daughter actually of, of the person who was teaching him how to be kingly. And uh, we're going to be exploring the end of the Plantagenets and the beginning of the Tudor reign. Now it's time to find out, Kay Jones, what's off your needles? Oh, goodness. Well, not really anything. No, no, there is. There's a very big project off your needles. It's marvellous. <laughs> it's really not. Shall I get it? Okay. Wonderful. I get... Oh, well. Oh, she's finished. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Show us. Do you remember the ridiculous needles I was knitting on last time? Look at the stitching though, it's marvellous. I know, that was going to be a cowl. Well, clearly 22 stitches was way too many for a cowl. And it, I finished knitting it in like an hour. And it just turned out to be a square. And it was just miles too, look, I mean it was miles too wide and not really big enough to, you know, I couldn't do that and make it into a cowl. Although I suppose I could... Well, no, you can't get your head through there. So it just turned into this it's huge a square. A I mean, this it's just, you know, the garter stitch is just massive. Look, it's huge. So I gave it Bryony and she decided it would make a lovely blanket for a toy. So she's just got it as a blanket. It was a super fun little thing to do. I did think, you know, it would make a great actual blanket, you know, for a bed. And you could knit strips of this. You know, if you knit a few long strips of this, which wouldn't take very long at all, and then just sewed them together, that it would make a very quick you know, blanket for a bed, wouldn't it? And it's so, it's so incredibly squishy. It's very soft, this yarn. So it was a lovely, fun little thing to do, you know. And I think um, what that shows you, the, the colourway is nice. It's lovely, and the yarn was really nice. And what did it cost? Was oh, it two three, three pound or two seventy nine a ball or something, and I used two balls. It was really, you know, not it just shows you, expensive. doesn't it? If you're looking for a, yeah. a hobby which isn't going to cost you very much. Well, yeah, absolutely. There was nothing wrong with the yarn at all. I really enjoyed knitting with it. So there's my finished object. Yes. Go on, Dan Jones. Yes. What's off your needles? Well, you're, you're the star of what's off your needles this time, aren't look. you? You finished my mittens and actually it is still cold enough to wear them. So I'm absolutely going to wear them when we go, because we'll probably go for a walk this afternoon. She um, prophesied that there would not be weather until winter. It's um, your fault. You were going to you were going to have to wait till winter to yeah. wear them. Oh, that's tough to say. Wait till winter because they're waiting them. for winter mittens. Yes, yes. Oh, what? And you were very excited, weren't you? Yes. <laughs> Because Dan posted a picture of the finished mittens on Instagram and guess who commented? But we need to add that I did not tag her in and, no. and then I felt bad because I didn't even put, put what they were. She I just knew. put, look what I finished. She knew they were her mittens. And someone commented who do you very think it quickly. Was? Lovely Susan, Susan B. Anderson said, what did she say? She said, I'm smitten with your mittens. He was absolutely thrilled. He said, have you seen, have you seen on Instagram who's, who's commented? I'm like, ooh, who is it? Might as well have been the queen, really. <laughs> so here they are. They're lovely, I'm gonna put them on. I've washed oh, them. Oh yes, show us. I've washed them. And when you were knitting, this was the second one, wasn't it? You were getting little blips of a red and tiny blips of a green. Can you see, can you see, look, a little spot of red there. And then there's a tiny bit of green there. A weeny, weeny bit of green. A weeny Ooh, bit of greeny. That sort of thrilled me. And they're lovely. What's the fit like? Because I messed up on one of them. I ended but, up no, knitting one, one slightly One was slightly longer the than the other one, the hand, but I blocked it so that they were the same. And they're absolutely fine, look. They're the lovely. yarn's lovely and soft. It's very nice. It really it. does. It makes me think of um, a barn full of Yeah, it's corn. lovely. Oh, and there's a tiny bit of purple there. There's, it must be the sari silk. Yeah. 
it's just oh I just love it and you've got quite a bit left haven't you so I might knit one of those little hearts and send it to your mum or something yeah well, she'd love that yarn wouldn't yeah she? yeah absolutely she would and that'd be really nice as a little heart so um yeah I enjoyed knitting them it's my first go at mittens and you know mm. the weather has played into our hands I know I'm gonna and wear apologies them to everyone who has been frustrated at getting dodgy weather it's all because of me yes if I got the mittens finished earlier, everything would have been fine. So, Love them. that is what's off our needles. And mm -hmm. um, I think we should find out what's on your TV. Oh. Now, you watched a very cool programme the other day. Uh, a family portrait of Queen Elizabeth II. Oh, uh, yeah. Did anybody watch? You know, there's been lots of things on about the Queen because she's just turned 90. She was 90 uh, one day last week. 21st. So there was lots of things on the TV, and there was one in particular on BBC One. It'll still be on iPlayer, I'm sure. I think it was just called The Queen at 90. And they did lots of, I mean, the you know, the Queen was sat there with Prince Charles, and they were watching old, is it called Cine Film? Cine you know, Camera, yeah. Cine Camera Film, of when they were, like, little, and the Queen was talking about it and saying what they were doing and where they were and having a little giggle. And it's quite a, it's just kind of nice seeing the Queen in a, a kind of a more relaxed informal situation that was really nice and there was just lots and lots of footage from all different various royals and it was really really i just found it really really interesting and you know if you've not watched dads and you can access iplayer then i'd go and watch it, it was really also nice. as well i would suspect that program because of how it was filmed and it was with all the royals that it, it's going to be appearing on other networks in other countries. I'm sure. It does strike yeah, me as, as the type of thing, and probably fairly imminently, because I do think that lots of countries are interested, aren't they, in, in the Queen? And, yeah. And what I liked about it was how informal it was shot. It was very informal, yeah. And how you would get it. It was like sitting down with a family yeah. and watching them look at footage, which a good proportion of them... And the queen, seen. the queen's amazing, you know. She's ninety, and she remember. This is going back. Some of the footage was like from the fifties, and she knew the name of like every dog on it, and every person that was in that picture. She knew all their names, just like that. Didn't even have to think about it. Yeah, she just must have the most amazing memory. It was lovely and well filmed because it mm. made you realise that they're just another family. Yeah, well, they are, aren't they? Yeah. And, you know, you can't help that you're born as a royal. You can't help that, can you? And, and you, you know, know you... I don't see the point in disliking them because they're royal, because, you know, a lot of people do. What, what I love about it is it links us to, to, so, so clearly to, to the past. Um, and, and I think it's really important to know your history and know where you've come from. Because I think if you know where you've come from, I, I certainly feel you have a better idea on where you're going. You know, I think that's why so many people mm. go and, and seek out their, mm. their their family line and their and their family tree. And you know, the amount of good that she does mm. and that they all do is just it's marvellous. So that was really fun to watch, wasn't it? Of course, yeah. And you were watching the the celebrations too. I did. Well, they they were yeah. they did that procession, didn't they? She was at Windsor and she in the Queen Mobile. Yeah, and she did like a little walkabout with um, Prince Philip, and then they got into a car and did a little sort of a little drive, a little drive yeah. through the town, you know, and obviously waving to everybody. But they got into this open topped Range Rover obviously been specially modified I've never seen anything like it it was like the Pope Mobile you know without a top on it was open it was a beautiful sunny day actually luckily and they were stood up in this and again you know Prince Philip is 95 shortly the Queen is 90 they were both stood up in this open top Range Rover they had little you know bars to hold on to but they were kind of you know going through crowds and waving at them and everything and I was like gosh they're stood up in that and well, it's just like, little things like that amazes me, you know. The, it was the like the, the jubilee they where they were on the boat. Yeah, and he, he got ill, didn't he, because yes. of what he did? Yeah, when it was the Queen's sixtieth, was it sixtieth jubilee? Yeah, she reigned for sixty years. They that had was a the regatta, that was a few didn't years they? ago. Yeah, they had like a regatta on the River Thames, and it was a cold day. You know, when you're on the river, it's always colder, isn't it? 
and they stood outside they could have gone inside but they stood outside on this boat the whole time and it was quite a long time and then prince philip subsequently after that got ill because yeah. you know because he'd been doing that so. well you think of the amount of things that she's seen the amount of prime ministers yeah. she, she sat down and spoke to the, the, yeah. the, you know, the, the stories the times, she must just be able to the good times and the bad yeah. times you know if what's led she knew winston churchill for heaven's sake yeah. i mean it's just you can't comprehend it, can you? And she takes everything completely in a stride. Uh, we started off the back of some of your recommendations watching Bosch. Yes. Um, and you're really enjoying it, aren't you? I really love it. I think it's great, yeah. And we, I didn't know, but Dan knew this character that was going to come into it last night when we were watching. It's his ex-wife. It was only one of the evil people out of 24. Nina Myers. Nina Myers. She sat there and I just went, oh, Nina Myers, <laughs> she's going to be evil. And actually she's not. She's a really nice person in it. And it's, it's, I couldn't get past that it was Nina Myers. The, there's also Annie Wershigs in it as well, who was in, yeah. uh, I think it's uh, 24 season six. Yeah, yeah. And also they have the phones that sound like 24. They do. Which, you know, and it is set in LA. So. Yeah. And actually, it, quite a few of the reviews had said how the, 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 the scenes of Los Angeles are yes. like a character in its own right. It's true. And it's so There's interesting the, the seeing them the, appearing yeah, in such... What's it called? The River Basin, is what, it? They were, I mean, they would seem to be exactly at the spot that was in Greece, yes. didn't they? Yes, and also that same place was used in uh, Terminator as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. So if you haven't... And there's nothing... There's there's nothing gruesome. No. Nope. There's there's no nope. gratuitous, amorous scenes. No. Nope. So you know it, it's a fairly fairly good safe program. Mm. I think I think to to watch. Really interesting. The storyline is really interesting. Yeah. Yeah, and what's nice is there's a second series oh, cool. already oh, cool. that, that's out. So huh. you know it's always good when you've got a, a run of a few things mm. that, to watch. And we've got another episode of Lucifer to watch as well. Brilliant. So there's lots of good things at the moment. But in saying all of that, you threw it in the blink of an eye and I think I've exhausted my back catalogue of what to watch. Oh, so please, please, please keep sharing and telling in the what's on your TV thread uh, of good things that you've watched. Specifically if you watched anything similar to Bosch. Um, and also anything, what's so cool about Lucifer is it's so different. Mm. It's very left field, uh, which is always, I think, interesting and fun to watch. So anything that you can recommend, let's share it in there. And then we can all make sure we've got good stuff to watch. Cool. It's time for the endy bits. Gosh, is it really? And the first endy bit is the double knit along. Wow, it's going really well, isn't it? Yes, there's lots of people getting involved, which is great. And please do come along and get involved if you fancy giving Double Knitting a go. And, you know, as I've said, I would heartily recommend it. Huge thanks to Nathan, who is, you know, dipping in and supporting and, and you know, being just really great as the Dark Lord of the DK. And <laughs> I must... I, the reason why I haven't posted my progress recently is just because it takes so long. I sort of want to post progress when I've actually made some progress. That is, so I was thinking when I get, you it's know. It's like you're knitting a hat twice. inside a hat though, isn't it? Yeah. So really. When I get halfway through, which will probably be within the next two days, I'll be sticking another post of where I'm up to. But you know, when you consider, I'm not going to get it, well, who knows? Well, no, I'll probably get halfway. <laughs> It'll probably take me twice as long as the actual missile will finish. But of course, I can't enter anyway. Um, and the prize, remember, is you get to pick one of Nathan's lovely patterns. And he's just brought out he's some just, crackers. He has, and he's working some on it at the moment. Some great socks and a really nice hat. He's working on the sock pattern. It's a toe-up sock with a heel flap and gusset and German short rows. Also. Is that, did I get that all right, Nathan? But it looked really cool, and I think it, that'll be out quite soon. Cool. So you could have that one if it's out. So, yeah, please get involved with the double knit along. What else... The only thing I've got is I have made a couple of little purchases. I haven't really been buying yarn very much lately at all. I've been knitting with what I've got, which is always, always good, I think. But um, recently... I do love that. I love that in any sense. She always sort of laughs at me because I've got cupboards full of wires. 
Oh, and it drives me mad. <laughs> what I love about it though is whatever the situation is. You've always got Normally, it. you know, if a power supply <laughs> breaks, there's <laughs> always a wire for the job. And it's the same with, with yarn. I would always you can have, go into your stash yeah. and pull out something in you know, that you feel the good. Only, the only yarn I wouldn't have is I don't have any sweater quantities, which is no great shock. Oh, I have done a little bit on my poncho, but only a few rows. Oh yes. I know. Well, I've been kind of sad this past couple of weeks, so I didn't want to make myself sadder <laughs> by forcing myself to knit on something that wasn't my favourite. But hold on. Cast your mind back to last episode. Well, I know. When I called it I think I the just poncho added, of doom. I think I just had a moment. No, I wouldn't call it a poncho of doom anymore. But I, You're close I just, to finishing it, though, aren't you? I'm really not far off. I think I've got something like three rows of the last pattern repeat and then I'll be on the border. So who knows? You can finish it by next episode. Well, that's very kind of you. Can you? Well, can you? could if I wanted to. <laughs> but then once he's done, he's done. I know, I know. You could be wearing it Stop on the next episode. Stop harassing me. That'd be so exciting. Opal recently brought out, fairly recently brought out, a new range of their Sweet and Spicy. And I've knit a couple of their colourways of the past Sweet and Spicy. And there was, I saw on Instagram a couple of people knitting at one particular colourway. And this is an example of what Dan was saying. I wouldn't have chosen this automatically when I looked at all the colourways that they had. It didn't appeal to me that much, but when I saw it knit up, I thought, oh, that's lovely. And so I, I went on and I ordered a couple of balls because I always like to, to or have one for me and one for Dan. So the one that I really liked was this one and it's saf, saf, Safran. See, it's saffron, isn't it? The colour is because there's little strands of saffron there, but that must be the German way of spelling saffron, I think. And it's these sort of lilac -y colours with this kind of like it's an orangey. I suppose that's the saffron colour, isn't it? But then there's also specks of a grey in there. And it, you can see how it knits up. It's really pretty when it's knit up. So I've got that one for me. And then I've got kiwi for Dan because I just loved, you know, he does like greens, so it's greens and browns, which I thought was really nice. Looks like a kiwi fruit, doesn't it? Which I suppose is the idea. Gosh, it absolutely looks like a kiwi fruit. You see, I want to knit the, I want to cast these on straight oh, I really want to cast all these on, which I can't cast on more socks, can I? And then this is Sarah Hepworth's fault, entirely Sarah Hepworth's fault. She's knitting. She'd sent me some little minis of the Cascade Heritage Prints and I loved, I'd never knit with it before and I loved knitting with it. Really soft, really, really lovely yarn to knit with. And then she posted a picture of a sock that she'd just started in this colourway and I was like, right, well, I'm going to have to get that, aren't I, Sarah? <laughs> just had to. And this was the colourway she was knitting with. I think it's called Coastal, but I can't fully remember. It's colourway 33. It's something to do with the coast coastline it's all these kind of you know coastal colors beautiful it knits up so pretty there's a little picture of it there how it knits up it's really lovely and I couldn't just get one because you can't just get one can you it's just not on so I got the roses colorway as well which Pauline um lovely Pauline has just finished giddy crafter has just finished a pair in these and it's so nice and that's lovely pinks oh it looks like ice cream doesn't it so that one can definitely go in my pinky purple. So I've got two skeins of those and I do want to cast them all on straight away, but I've resisted thus far. Who knows whether that, that resistance will last. So All done? I think so. Cool. Yeah. Uh, quick one, Baker Bear podcast patrons, the uh, Baker Bear news should have been emailed to you by now. If you haven't received it, do drop me a line in the usual way and I'll make sure you get a copy. At the back of that, we've now integrated our interactive playlist. So to access any of the over 80 tutorials, and you've got some corkers coming up. She was great. She sat down, didn't you, the other day and worked out a lineup coming and they're all really cool. I did. Yeah. Um, so you can access all of our additional content that way. Uh, and as I say, if you haven't received it, do let me know. We'll be back in two weeks for part two of uh, our current series of favourite places to knit, which is so exciting. I hope the weather warms up for us doing that. We're also, I was also working out the storyboard as well for the Beckery Best Picnic, which is coming up really soon as well. Mm. Keep your eyes open for that. So lots going on. So thank you so much for watching. 
Thank you. Aren't they marvellous? You are all marvellous. Uh, and we will see you in two weeks for more Bakery Bears. See you soon. Bye.